Hey, what's up everybody? So I made an Instagram post the other day of this uh, quad box that I made with the detachable power con in and somebody said, hey, you should do a tutorial on how to build those. So why the hell not? Let's do that. So this whole thing is relatively simple. You have a four inch square box with a dual gain cover on it and a, a power con end. And you just can take an old extension cord or something, maybe one that's broken, which is what I did and uh, just put a power con on one end and an Edison plug on the other and there you go. Now you can buy these things online, you can buy this online pre-made and it's gonna be like over $100, but I've already priced out what it takes to build one of these and even with the cord installed, you're gonna be making these for less than 40 bucks. Especially if you've already got some busted cords lying around. All right, so hopefully this angle shows everything you need. You basically just have a four inch square box a dual gain cover, power con end. These two together are about three dollars. This is about six. Maybe this is another five or six. These are about a dollar fifty, two dollars a piece. Now you only need 15 amp receptacles. You can use 20, but it's overkill because you're not going to plug in any single piece of equipment that's going to draw over 20 amps. You know, if, if you're using these for audio, I guess. If you're using them for something else, then yeah, you need to beef them up 12 gauge wire, uh, 15, 20 amp receptacles. But for this purpose, mainly this is gonna be for audio, so 15 amp is more than enough. So I have a bunch of these square boxes lying around. This one in particular does not have any three quarter knockouts. It only has half inch. If you have a three quarter knockout, then you really don't need to use a unibit to drill this out. But then again, it does have a little bit of wiggle room and you are gonna have to secure that. You're gonna have to secure it either way. But I would rather just drill it out. I just pop that out to illustrate how that works. This is another one of the same boxes that has half inch and three quarter knockouts in the center depending on which way you rotate this bad boy. You are gonna have to take about an eighth inch bit to drill these uh, screw holes out got two small number four screws with lock washers and man that's it that's all there is to it and I got a couple scraps of wire that I pulled off of some uh, Romex that I was using I've done this on the road without a drill press but if you have a drill press it's gonna make this way easier less dangerous too Pop that unit bit out. Move on to your eighth inch bit. If you get these more residential type outlets, receptacles, you're going to need to pop these little tabs off the end here. Now let's get technical for a moment. So I'm going to make this cable out of some 14 gauge, 14.3 that I had lying around. I you can also make this with 12. If you're using this for amp back lines or anything like that or for your band, then 14.3 cable is probably gonna be more than enough for at least you and a bass player, you and a guitar player, whatever. You know, I'd advise to carry a couple of these, but two or three of these drops for a normal back line, even if you're pulling like an SVT in an old Marshall or something like that, it's not gonna pull over 15 amps. You start going over 50 feet with your cable, 
and I would definitely suggest going up to a 12 gauge but in most situations you shouldn't need more than that we'll start by just joining the two together after you have these two kind of joined together is I usually just I solder these in place. I just stick the wire right underneath there, get it plenty plenty hot and drip lots and lots of solder in there. If you have something like this, you don't need to necessarily solder these in. If you've seen any quad box in any venue across America, you know how fucked up that shit is. So just solder it. Don't I try not to rely on any of these screw terminals if I don't have to solder everything because you're not going to find out it's broken until you really, really need it. pretty much it. Now normally if you're using a box that's solid metal with a solid metal cover, you do not have to attach these ground tabs here to a ground wire. But if you look at this cover in particular, this one's painted so you need to actually run a whole nother wire connecting these two to this ground tab right here. shitload of excess wire in here, but you need to have enough that it can properly bend over itself and push it back in place. This is just a 14-3 electrical cord that I have laying around. You can probably find an old extension cord from the dad's garage or steal it from another trade on the job site. It's perfectly acceptable. You don't necessarily have to solder these, but again, they're going to be used and abused quite a bit. So I always do. There's really two ways you can solder this. You can either pin them down and then solder it after the fact, or you can just unscrew this and take that out all together and fill that whole cavity for the solder. electrically I would recommend to test it in every case. The one time you don't the way I like to do it just plug it into my variac here since I have a switch to turn the power on and off. So anyway we'll plug in this handy dandy broken circuit tester which it's broken but it still works. And put the power on and now we know the circuit is correct. I got the two correct lights on. 
You can buy these circuit testers for a few dollars. I have another one in my van, but this one's just the one I had laying out here. I was trying to work on it last night, but broke it. Anyway, so we're good. You can touch the box without getting electrocuted. And now you have a quad box, a detachable cable for storage. That's all there is to it. You have a quad with the cable and all the ends for about 40 bucks. That sure as hell beats paying $100 for just a cord. These things are great. I carry around a bunch of them on the road. Keep them in my pedal board box, whatever. Keep a couple in your merch box. Because direct support always hides the drops behind their amps. And when they don't hide them, they plug in four or five things into the only drops you get. Carry a couple of these around on your gig bag so you don't get fucked with not having enough stage power. The first time I actually saw these was, I think, at the Exit Inn in Nashville. And one of the house guys had made a bunch of them. And I don't know if they were the clubs, they were his, but they just made a whole lot of sense. And they were really convenient, especially for wrapping up at the end of the day. And you didn't have to spend a ton of money to put them together. Now, if you want, you can also put in the power con pass-through on the other side, which is the gray panel. But I'm not trying to string an entire stage off of a single breaker. This is just to extend what you got or bring power to where you need it. Thanks for watching. If I have any other ideas that I think might be helpful to you guys, I'll certainly do some more tutorials on how to build simple little stuff like this in your spare time.